Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome you to today's luncheon. I have a few quick announcements. We have a lot of people to get to today, um, but I wanted to make a couple of important announcements. First off, we'd like to welcome uh, one of our sponsors here today, and that is the owner of Kells Irish Pub, Jared McAleese. Over here. Say hello. Thank you very much for sponsoring Portland State Athletics. Um, I have another uh, person I would like to introduce today. She will not be speaking, but uh, please uh, come by and say hello to her. Get to know her a little bit uh, when you can at the end of the luncheon. And, and that is our new women's golf coach. We talked a little bit about golf uh, in recent weeks. You got to meet Aram Choi, uh, quite a personality she is. Uh, fun kid. But this is our new head coach right here, Kaylin Downs. I was also prompted on the way in the door to uh, announce a betrothal. I don't know if that's the right word. Uh, there is a, 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 uh, a wedding uh, coming down the road uh, between a couple of Vikings, Connor Cavanaugh and Lexi Bishop, uh, recently announced. <laughs> Families here today. So those are all kind of the important announcements uh, for you today. Um, We'll talk about a number of sports. Uh, first off, the women's volleyball team right now is on the road. They're playing at Eastern Washington tonight. They will be at home the last two weeks of the season. We remind you of the Big Sky Conference Volleyball Championship that comes uh, over Thanksgiving weekend. Portland State will be hosting that. Check out GoVikes.com for all the details on that one. Cross-country program will be competing at the Big Sky Championships this Saturday in Bozeman, Montana. So I hope they pack their long johns for that one. Uh, Cross-country championship this Saturday. Uh, the soccer program, we have talked a lot about them the last two weeks. Last week when we were here, we announced that they had already clinched the Big Sky Championship. That was fantastic. They won their final match this week. They end the Big Sky Conference season undefeated. And that is a remarkable accomplishment. <laughs> The Big Sky Conference Soccer Championship is November 7th and 9th. Portland State will host that at Hillsborough Stadium. And uh, for a few quick words on the soccer program, I'm going to introduce to you once again Head Coach Laura Schott. Hello again, everybody. Um, it's great to see everybody, and it's great to have a, a lot of my colleagues here today. Um, man, I can't really express how uh, proud I am of the group so far this year. Um, you know, as Mike mentioned, we have the tournament coming up in not this weekend, but the following weekend on Thursday. Uh, yes, the semifinals on Thursday. Uh, it's slated to be at 3 p.m. I hope to, to see a lot of people out there. And then if we earn the right to play, we'll play again on Saturday. So we're looking forward to starting the next leg of our, our season. Uh, a few notes about the group this year. Uh, this weekend, uh, we played Sac State. We ended up winning that game 1-0 to, to finish undefeated, as, as Mike mentioned as well. And uh, our goalkeeper uh, broke the shutout record, uh, the PSU single season shutout record, which is currently, well, was currently held by Chris Lewis, who's currently playing for the, the Thorns. So we're very excited for her. Uh, she's had a tremendous year, and it speaks a lot to our back line, who's had six shutouts uh, in Big Sky play and they've allowed three goals, two of those which were PKs, which I don't know how many of you guys follow soccer, but PKs, they can happen whenever. Sometimes they're merited, sometimes they're not, but only one goal in the run of play. So really, really big, uh, big season for our girls. So we're looking forward to getting, getting on with the rest of our season and getting on with the, uh, the semifinal. One area of our program that we really do need to improve is performing in elimination games. And we're looking forward to uh, having a crack at it on Thursday the 7th. So with that, uh, I'll, I'll answer any questions and step down and let everybody else speak. Yeah, Terry. Just a quick question. You have this big break now. Um, kind of how does that play into your team practices? And how, how does the team feel about having a break when they're really hot and warm? Um, the team seems excited about it. It's not so much, I mean, obviously, game-wise, yes, it is, it is a break, and you can break rhythm there. Uh, the other teams that are uh, playing in the tournament, I know that two of them also have buys. The third even might have a buy. 
Um, so we all are kind of, you know, lay in wait and practice and get sharper. Um, so we've had that discussion with the group, and, you know, it's something that we're looking at, and we're going to have an inner squad in the, the meantime. And um, we're not, we're by no means taking a break, though. We're going to be out there uh, every day. The NCAA lets us be out there, and we're going to be pressing forward, getting better, uh, getting ready for the semifinal. Who are the the other teams are, in order, Northern Arizona got second. They'll play Weber State in the other semifinal. And then Northern Colorado we will play on Thursday at 3. Okay, I'm sure we'll uh, speak with Laura again in two weeks. And I want to let you all know that next Monday there will be no luncheon. I'm told uh, there will be no luncheon here next Monday. We will have already won the Big Sky Soccer Championship by then. Oh, no, not next Monday, the following Monday. Oh, yeah, the following Monday. So in the following Monday, we'll have Laura back, and she'll talk all about what is, how exciting it's going to be to go to the NCAA championship. All right, moving right along, we'll go to basketball. We're very excited about our basketball teams and the season opening up this Friday night with a doubleheader exhibition um, games, both men and women. The women play at 6 p.m. against Simon Fraser. The men at 8.15 against Northwest Christian. And uh, we're going to start with men's basketball today, and we have a 17-game home schedule. Actually, if you count the exhibition game, that's an 18-game home schedule, which is the most we've ever had in Portland State history, which means by the end of the season, we will all be very, very fat because we are all going to get stuffed uh, 18 times. And we'll factor in about 15 or 16 women's games. Just imagine how much food you're going to eat this winter at the Stott Center. All right, we're going to go to head coach Tyler Geving in his fifth year as a head coach, ninth year at Portland State. I'd really like to uh, thank David. Uh, that's 18 nights my family gets a free meal, so that's, that's, that's big. That's huge. So excited about that. But uh, it's always uh, season comes up quick every year with the exhibition games. Everybody asks are you guys ready to go? And I'm like, no, not even close. So I think that's kind of the, the coach talking us a little bit. When you uh, get a few practices under your belt, you're like, eh, we probably need about six or seven more before we play a game. But it's here and uh, excited about what we can do and, and who we have. Uh, right now, I feel like we're uh, playing football. I looked over there the other day and we had five scholarship guys out. And uh, so we had a rough week last week. Things have been going well at practice, but uh, last week was a little bit rough with some injuries. So this week, what, what you won't see with our team, uh, Gary Winston's probably out about another two or three weeks. He, uh, this last summer after the end of the year, he was hurt all year and came up with a, a stress fracture in his pelvis. So he was out the whole summer. And then on top of that, he had a hernia surgery right after that. So they had to wait for his pelvis to kind of heal from that. So he had the uh, hernia surgery about four weeks ago, and he's about two or three weeks away. Um, and obviously, he's a, a big part of what we're trying to do. So he, he won't be playing. Uh, the other uh, recruit that you won't see is Teague B. Bamba, the kid from Midland who had an Achilles injury. He's probably another two or three weeks away also from, from playing. Uh, some bright spots, I think, uh, that I've seen so far, our, our kid from uh, Silverton, Zach Gangler, that was the 5A player of the year, the freshman. Um, you know, he hurt his ankle this last week and didn't practice all week, but he'll be back today. But uh, Zach's going to be a, a special player, I think, for us. And uh, I think he's got a chance to, I'm putting a little pressure on him, but I think he's got a great opportunity to maybe even be freshman of the year. I think he's going to play a lot of minutes and smart kid, good kid, and, and really excited about what he can bring to the table. So. Uh, excited about our home schedule. Obviously, 17 games is a lot in the first ever uh, time in school history. We have a tournament coming up here next month. I think it's 22nd through the 24th, 21st through the 23rd, that Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, so to get three home games in a row early on, hopefully that'll be a, a, a good thing for us. And, and getting Portland at home and Idaho, who will be in our league, uh, will be at our place as well. So I like our schedule, and we just got to uh, get everybody cleaned up, get everybody healthy. but and uh, get this thing going in the right direction and excited for it to get going. All right, we would like to introduce uh, our women's head coach, Sherry Merle, in her seventh year at Portland State, and uh, she's got a few words for us as well. Well, first of all, I want to uh, thank everyone that's here today, and I want to challenge you to bring somebody else here next time. All right, so if you're here, you're not coming alone, and don't bring the same person you bring all the time. Don't bring your wife. Bring somebody else. I'll get in trouble, girl. 
<laughs> I didn't say bring that other girl, Gary. Okay. Honestly, let's. Uh, that's how things work. We just uh, word of mouth and get people. I, I honest, uh, honestly believe that our program has grown through word of mouth and getting um, people to get to know our players intimately um, and getting to know the program. And that's the same thing that can happen here. So I just challenge everybody. I want to thank all the um, people that are here that support us. Um, it means a lot to us. Um, you get you get so many years in your coaching career and you're blessed um, by special people and uh, Lexi Bishop that uh, is engaged to Camp Connor Kavanaugh was one of those kids so it's a pleasure I mean I walked through the door and I was like oh I got chills looking at Craig and Cindy Bishop who are, are just like wonderful people and and Lexi was one of those special people that I've coached so it's just a, a neat thing to see them here today <clears throat> so our basketball team uh, just get, got out of practice literally a couple of minutes ago um, well, knock on wood, we are healthy. Um, we had those issues last year, and we're hoping we put that behind us. But everybody is healthy, and the question I get a lot is um, because uh, we're very driven by our point guard. I think uh, it's the quarterback uh, in the in the situation for basketball, uh, as it is for football. And Kate Lands is looking great. She's uh, back on the court, and she's full. <clears throat> she's a full go, so we're excited about that. And then Angela Misa, the other um, injury that we had in the post player, she's she's back. So we're looking forward to seeing those healthy players. Um, the thing that I really like about this team, it actually kind of reminds me a little bit of the teams um, that Lexi was on, but there's really no weak link. We have uh, just some great players. The chemistry's good. Every year is the chemistry project, and I would have to say last year our chemistry was not there. And this year I like the chemistry. There's a lot of, uh, I think, uh, good pieces that we have, but those pieces are meshing together, and I think, uh, I think, our, um, I th I think our team's going to show it. When you're a fan, you want to come and identify with a team. And I think most people want to identify with hard work because we do it in our daily lives. And I think you're going to watch our team and they're going to work hard for you and for Portland State. And I think that's what you're going to find. They're, they're really, really hard workers. Um, so I think you're going to find a lot on that. <clears throat> our schedule um, is tough. Uh, I keep telling our girls, focus on growth um, and keep growing because our schedule, honestly, and the preseason is the toughest I've ever seen it. Um, we play the people like Georgia Tech on the road. We play um, Gonzaga on the road. Um, we play St. <clears throat> St. Mary's, and they were in the, in the NCAA tournament. So we play a lot of tough teams. So I want them to just think growth and get her done when conference comes around. You know, I have no idea what our preseason is going to look like as far as wins and losses. But what really matters is getting her done once that uh, conference happens. And our conference uh, is, is um, just really, really good. Last year, we had four teams go to postseason. So that's how good our – and that just doesn't happen um, in the Big Sky Conference very often. And that's how good our uh, – and we have a really good coaches in the conference. So um, we look to see that same thing happening. So when you come to a conference game and you're chowing down and eating a lot of food, you're going to see a lot of good, good opponents in the gym to play against. So – Really looking forward to uh, every season. I always do. I mean, who doesn't come up here and say that? You know, two things coaches do. Hey, I'm looking forward to the season, and we have a good recruiting class. <laughs> right? Has those things ever changed? Um, but it's, uh, that's the beauty about, uh, you know, sports teams, because every, every year is a new year, right? Um, so it is a new year. We're very excited about it. And uh, we look forward to uh, having a lot of fan support. Um, those girls really know if you're there or not. So uh, I look forward to that. Any questions from you all that you have for women's basketball? Yes, Rich? Tell us about uh, the center, surprise center that uh, we're getting uh, from our volleyball program. Yeah, Kara Olden. Um, so Kara uh, plays uh, volleyball, and the nice thing about Kara is that uh, she is nice. And I was really concerned about that. Um, I like nice people, but when they play in the post, I don't like them to be nice. She literally would walk into my office last year and say, hi, coach, I just, you know, and she had her Bible in one arm, and she just, ser <laughs> seriously, I mean, this is Kara, and she's like, hi, coach, how are you? And she goes, I would really like to try out for your team. And I'm like, that's great, Kara. And I said, well, let's do a tryout. And I really had no expectations, because really volleyball players play volleyball for a reason. There's a net in between. They don't like contact. <laughs> and so, and when you're in basketball, you hit, you get, you know, uh, you get injured. 
Um, so I really had no expectations for Kara. She walked in. I had one of my coaches, a male coach, uh, coach play against her in a one-on-one -on -one situation. I said, beat the heck out of her. I want to see what happens. And he got taken to the cleaners. I mean, he just was, he said he had bruises all over him. Um, so she's, a, she's an athlete. Um, I think it's going to take some time. You know, if you're doing this all the time and you're having to do a different sport, and you know, you're going to have a timing situation. So I think it's going to take a little time. Um, but I think she's really going to add to our team. Um, and then what's the blessing about this is that she actually can get another year, Rich. So um, I want her, you know, I think, I think she's going to be a great addition. So she'll actually play another year next year. Um, so we're looking forward to that. So yeah, she's a fun addition um, to our team, and she's, she's not a nice girl on the court, which I love. <laughs> it was Ralph Miller, I went to his basketball camp one time, and he, Ralph Miller was smoking a cigarette in the middle of the court at Gill Coliseum. He goes, and I was a little kid going to the OSU basketball camp, he says, you will either be a, a basketball player or a girl, what do you want to be? And he says, you, you sh you're a basketball player on the court, and you're a girl off the court, you know? And he just, he's sitting there smoking a cigarette, I'd never forget that. Guy scared the heck out of me. <laughs> well, I'm sure there's no other questions, and let's uh, listen to the, uh, the the football team that won. All right. While Sherry was talking, I got a call from volleyball coach Michael Seaman. He wants to chat with you about your impressions of volleyball players. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> All right, thank you, Sherry. And uh, once again, uh, basketball this Friday night at the Stott Center. Um, let's move along now and talk about football. We have a lot to talk about. And when we um, were getting ready for this luncheon, I was trying to decide I wanted to have a football player here today um, because uh, they played very well. They finally overcame some challenges during the game and won a game that, frankly, they pretty much dominated. Um, and the defense played great. Special teams played great. Had a little trouble with the kicking game, but I can tell you all the rest of those special teams did a phenomenal job. The kick returner for North Dakota is one of the best in the nation. Had two kick returns for touchdowns going into that game. He had three kick returns in that game for an average of 10 yards per return. He averaged 27 going into the game. So special teams all over did a number of great things. So I'm like, can we get a special teams guy here, maybe a defensive guy here? I talked to Coach Burton. I was obviously very interested in getting Michael Plummer here because he blocked that punt that kind of got things started for us in the fourth quarter. I was very interested in having David Edgerson here because he's played great all year. He made a couple interceptions. He made the key interception at the end of the game that ended the game, basically ended the game. When Coach Burton told them that it was a free lunch, they both volunteered. <laughs> so we're going to hear from two young men today who played very good football. Um, the first guy... And um, I'm going to take a moment because you people see what happens on the field, on the court. You don't see what happens very much the other 300 and some days of the year when these guys are preparing to play. And some guys are starters. Some guys are second stringers. Some guys play on special teams. Some guys sit on the bench. Everybody works the same amount. So you have to have tremendous respect for those guys who maybe don't get the accolades as being the star, they're not the quarterback, the running back, the guy who gets all the sacks, those types of things. And we have a young man here today who's played four years in our program and done a tremendous job. He's a safety, uh, he's a senior, and you haven't seen him out there in the starting lineup. But you have seen him on the field. You've seen him playing in special teams, and like I said, our special teams unit uh, was, was for the most part excellent on Saturday. But this is a guy who knows his role and has done a phenomenal job with his role. And I can tell you now he's getting rewarded for it. He blocked a punt at Southern Utah and we ended up losing that game. But you come back and you work for two weeks to get ready for North Dakota. They get the plan in place. They decide they're going for the block. He gets the block at North Dakota and that makes all the difference. I mean, let's face it, it made all the difference. So. I'm very excited that he gets an opportunity to be out front like the quarterbacks and the stars of, of the team get to be out front. So I want to introduce to you a young man. He's from Gresham, again, an East Sider. I try to get all the East Siders in here because I'm from the, although he, go, he went to Barlow High School, I went to Sandy. Uh, we didn't like each other much back in those days, but, but uh, I'm, I'm uh, really thrilled to introduce to you. He's going to 
just say a few words and, and feel free to ask him a question. Um, Michael Plummer. First, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to have me speak today. And it's, it's been great being here the last four years as a hometown kid coming from Barlow. Like, I, I went to Portland State games growing up all the time. So it's, it's been a privilege to play here. And I just thank all of you for the support that you give every week in coming to the games because I know it means a lot to us, each one of you. And uh, so I just want to thank you guys for coming and thanks for giving me the opportunity. Thank you. Uh, I am majoring in uh, communication with a minor in business. I actually graduated last spring, so I literally just came back for my final fifth season just to play. So it meant a lot to me to be a part of the team, so I wanted to finish it out. Describe the play. You described it after the game. Yeah. You just kind of describe the play and how it comes together with the block. Well, so after we come off the field, on uh, we call our pump block team the snipers, and uh, we come off, and I was talking to Coach Malloy, our uh, coordinator, and just told him what me and Justin Lilly were seeing because we kind of play off of each other and both go for the blocks a lot of the time. And he told me to move outside a gap, just how they were blocking it. And on the field, we made a quick adjustment because the guard on their punt team had moved out a lot wider, so me and Justin could both rush the A-gaps. And we did, and Justin Lilly, I give most of the block to him because he crashed down on their three-man shield, which gave me the opportunity to get the short edge and just go for the block. So it was a great call and a good job by everybody else on the team, and it just made me able to come free and get the block. Um, second young man uh, you're going to hear from today, He's one of those guys who has been a starter. You're probably a little bit more familiar with him. Um, David Edgerson was in my office about an hour ago uh, on an unrelated matter. And uh, he walked out of the office, and I got an email from the Big Sky Conference, literally as he walked out the door. And uh, it said, David Edgerson has been named the Big Sky Conference Defensive Player of the Week. So I'm happy to announce that. And we were going to try to keep it a secret from him, um, but word gets out quickly, and he heard from about three or four people on the way out the door. So, uh, uh, but good for him, and uh, he has played uh, extremely well. He, along with Dean Faddis, have played very, very well at the safety spot this year. The last two weeks in a row, our defense has been excellent, allowing just over 200 yards per game, and those are pretty remarkable numbers in college football these days. Uh, gave up 17 points in one game, 10 points in another game and uh, just really, really played well. David, of course, as you know, had two interceptions, had the key interception there at the end of the game uh, that kind of sealed it for us. So I'm going to introduce the Big Sky Conference leader in interceptions with four this season, David Edgerson. Good afternoon, everybody. I just want to thank y'all for inviting me here today, uh, share some time with y'all. I want to thank you all for supporting us, too. Uh, it's a pleasure just to have you guys in the back of us, pushing us forward to do our best every week. Uh, I'm a social science major, so I want to let you guys know that. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm from Louisiana, New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, I'm a long way from home, but I got my second home out here, and I love being out here with you guys. Any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, great recruit, Coach Burton. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love the city. I came on my visit. Uh, I instantly fell in love. Uh, I have a fiance and a son. It's a great place to raise a family, so I just wanted to bring them with me, too. <coughs> Any more questions? Finish this year? Yes, sir. I graduated last spring with uh, Michael Plummer, so it was just bad. Where are you doing next year? Uh, uh, I'm thinking about training to do pro day. Uh, if season keeps going well, I might do that. Uh, if not, I have plans to be the fireman of police, so. I want to go down that road, help some people out. Thank you. Thank you. I would encourage all of you uh, when we're done here today to say hello to these uh, young men. Uh, as you can tell, they're, they're pretty good guys, um, and they have their, their hearts and their minds in the right place, and that's pretty important. 
Uh, let's move ahead. I know we have a big multimedia presentation uh, <laughs> scheduled here for us. We have a smiling Nigel Burton. And believe me, that means a lot to me. <laughs> a lot to me. Probably even more to those guys, but a lot to me. So uh, let's talk to uh, the winner of uh, the football game on Saturday, the winning head coach, Nigel Burton. Well, I, I really appreciate Appreciate you all being here. Um, um, a couple of things I wanted to mention. Apparently, love is in the air with old Viking football. We got uh, Lexi and Cav. We also had uh, Ryan Rao, if you remember that name. Ryan Rao, who played with Philadelphia Eagles uh, and played for us in 2011. Got engaged this weekend as well to his girlfriend, also a Vike, Elisa. And uh, Joey Esposito, I don't know if you guys remember that name. Young man who had cancer, uh, took a year off with us, came back and played again. Uh, got married this weekend to his longtime uh, girlfriend, Shauna. So uh, we're winning football games and getting married and making babies or whatever the heck's going on. Uh, so uh, uh, <laughs> also, uh, I also want to thank David Hirsch uh, for uh, the Get Stuff promotion and basically extending my team's training table for 33 days or so uh, uh, in the winter. So uh, there will be a lot of football players at all the men's and women's basketball games. It will not be by choice. Uh, but, uh, and then, um, you know, Mike took a lot of my thunder um, in talking about those two kids. Uh, you know, uh, I know it, I play the big bad football coach, but Ty sat in the room when I was bawling like a baby, I'm sure, at some point, because that's how we look at them, and they're our kids. They grow up, and they wear suits, and then they order us around one day. Um, but they are. Uh, I'll never forget flying down to San Diego and putting David on the board and trying to see if I could teach him the defense. I said, I could teach you the defense in 43 seconds. And I did, and I said, you got it? And he goes, yeah, I got it. I go, yeah, all right, sure you got it. Here, here's the pin. Teach it back to me. And he got on the board with his left hand, and which was a little weird, but whatever, and spit everything back to me. And it was awesome. I walked out of the room. I looked at John Eli. I said, that's our guy. And, um, and Plum, I don't know if you guys remember, uh, Mark Kreiner, um, who coached here, I was coaching at the University of Idaho, and he said, hey, I got this great kid. He's probably not going to play for me. Um, he's from Portland, and he wants to transfer back home. You should take him. And, um, you know, I, I think about the conversation we had even last week, talking about, hey, uh, you know, there's this rumor that kids might leave or this or that. And, um, you know, in the end, I think if we weren't doing a good job, guys like Mike Plummer wouldn't stay. Guys like David Ederson wouldn't stay. They don't need to stay. Dean Faddis. Those guys didn't need to stay. They were they're done. If they weren't having a good time, if they weren't feeling like they were getting uh, something out of the program, uh, then they would say, thank you for my degree. I'm out. <laughs> and, uh, you know, to hear – and Mike's not a star. Mike's not doing it for the girls and the glory. He's, he does it because he cares. And uh, uh, it's been a big part of his life, and he's a big part of mine. And uh, same with Edge. Uh, I watched his uh, baby boy, basically uh, Debo, my daughter, at our house for, uh, what the heck is that thing called, that little toy? The leapfrog, yeah. His son just basically beat up my daughter, who's two years older, mind you, <laughs> for her leapfrog. Uh, they're a part of our families, and uh, it's awesome to see them get paid for their work uh, and all those things. Um, obviously, this Saturday was a good win. It was a big win, and it was a win that we needed um, the way that we played. We actually needed to win it that way. Because if you're winning games 57-17 or you're losing, when you get in those tight games with teams that are good, they don't know what it's like to grind those out. So you need to have game where you learn how to grind it out. In 2011 with uh, Cavs kid, it was the Northern Arizona game. And after Northern Arizona, it made them feel like we can do this again, and we did it again in Northern Colorado, and we did it again uh, in, in games afterwards. You got to have a game like that where it's muddy and it's nasty and nothing's clicking and nothing's going well and you find a way to win. And, uh, and so we've got that. And so as we hit this uh, uh, final home stretch and we need to win some games to give ourselves the uh, chance to play in the playoffs, uh, uh, they understand that now we're in close, muddy games, we can, we can win them and we know how to do it. So um, that being said and done, um, once again, I thank you all for being here and if there's uh, any questions for me. Quarterback, um, yeah, that's that was an interesting one. Um, we had a plan that uh, Kieran had just 
really played well in practice. I mean, lights out. And I um, uh, really felt as though, you know, maybe it kind of turned the corner, we'd be okay. And it was still muddy in the first half. So we put Colin back in, or excuse me, we put Paris in, who we've got a lot of confidence in Paris Penn. And uh, Paris hurt his shoulder on the second series. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll have him for this weekend, but we definitely weren't going to have him for the rest of the day. Decided to go back to, to Karen, and um, it still just wasn't going. And so uh, Colin's specialty is, is tossing the ball around. And um, we put Colin in, and I've always kind of had that quote, we have three guys we know we can win Big Sky games with. And uh, I never thought I'd have to use it all in one game, but, uh, but uh, Colin was able to get it done. And we're really proud of uh, really the way that they all they – because all, if, if you're not a team guy, if you're a me guy, then when you're – Head coach comes in and say you're not starting this week. They shut down, um, and those guys have always encouraged each other. Same as when we had Cavan Drew, and we still talk about those guys. And so they were able to kind of push each other through. And then when their number was called, they were ready, and uh, and we won the game. So that's uh, that's how that thing worked out. And we'll we'll see what happens uh, this next week. Sylvia. Um, I yeah. I give my assistants a lot of autonomy. Um, that's what I wanted as an assistant coach myself. Uh, John Ely had said, uh, if you fumble the ball once, I'm going to give you the ball right back because I'm going to show you I believe in you. You fumble the ball twice, now it's shame on me. So you're going to sit for a little bit and I'm going to make a point. And uh, John came up to me right before the game. He says, uh, he goes, you watch the second quarter when this kid gets in, I think you'll see a different DJ Adams. And uh, 18 carries, 111 yards, and two touchdowns later, that, that was the guy, that was a man possessed. I think if we had just kind of started and said, yeah, it's okay, I'm not sure you saw that. You would have seen what, what you saw there. So, um, what else? What other questions? Yes, sir. You got two running backs who are good running backs and have different skills, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, how do you decide which one to start? You know, truth be told, I feel like I got five, to be honest with you, because I know what it's like to have one. When we had Corey McCaffrey, we had one. When he got hurt, we were different. Um, you know, not only do we have Shaq and DJ, Justin Lilly has played a lot of good football for us. I think Nate Tonga will be a superstar here. He's exactly like DJ, but he's a freshman. Um, might even be a little faster than DJ. Um, so in terms of how we play them, it's a lot like the rest of our positions. Whoever's playing better at the time, in his stride, practicing well, um, will start it off. And, and typically, you know, DJ's special. Um, and we use Shaq to kind of offset him. Um, it's because we want to keep him healthy as opposed to riding a guy for 30-something carries. And, uh, and Nate's gotten some nice runs too, so that's kind of how we go about it. We never want a guy to have more than 25 carries. 25 is kind of the top, and that's in a real grind them out game. So, question? What are we going to see you this Saturday? Uh, you know, I think, uh, one, I'm, I'm looking forward to our offense getting back on track. Uh, I think what you guys are seeing right now is the uh, improvement that we were looking for uh, this season on defense and special teams. I think those guys have uh, just done an awesome job. Special teams really is offense and defense. So you've got plum blocking kicks. We've got David, uh, David Jones, who's a wide receiver, making big time tackles, all those things, um, and, and getting it clicking again. Uh, Weaver's a, a good football team. The record isn't really indicative of who they are. Uh, you're going to see a lot of, um, you know, they've, they've got a lot of big plays. I think they're going through what we kind of went through last year uh, in terms of they're playing a ton of freshmen. I think we played 26 freshmen last year. Uh, now we're playing the same kind of number of freshmen with their red shirts uh, and, and sophomores. I think they played some like 20 something freshmen. So, um, but they're a very good football team. So we're going to have our hands full. Absolutely. Uh, what other questions? It was just wonderful to see the win. Yeah, it was. It was good. The audience was behind you guys for sure. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, it's uh, after a win, the sun shines a little brighter and uh, the birds chirp a little louder and, uh, and all those things. But I, I was just happy to see these guys get paid for their work because they work so hard and we push them to no end. And, uh, and to see them, you know, uh, to, to come through. And, uh, and now the run starts. So here we go. Anyway, appreciate you guys and uh, go Vikes.
Well, believe it or not, that is our last speaker of the day. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, please feel free to say uh, hi to the uh, players here and the coaches, and as well, introduce yourself to Kaylin Downs, our new golf coach. Thank you again.